Hallelujah. Um, we are speaking about the amazing uh, topic. We're going deeper into discernment. We're speaking about the four basics of stronger discernment. And we're going to speak about the second basic today called uh, the doctrine of righteousness. We've looked a little bit into it, but today we're going to begin to go to the other aspect of the importance of the doctrine of righteousness for the purpose of discernment. So let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you will help us to be able to understand the second um, principle. Holy Spirit, help us to not get it only in our minds, but get it in our, in our spirits. And I pray, Father, for an impartation of the truth. Father, that will help people to, to see deeper and so that their discernment in the Spirit will grow. Thank you, Father, that there will also be an impartation as the truth sets people free and matures people in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, we are looking at the, the second principle in how to have a stronger basic of discernment. And it's called the doctrine of righteousness. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11, Paul speaks to the people, I believe the writer of Hebrews is Paul, concerning this we have much to say, which is hard to explain, since you have become dull in your spiritual hearing and sluggish and even slothful in achieving spiritual insight. Let's just stop right there. You know, Paul is saying, you know, I've got a lot of things I want to explain to you spiritually, but you are slow. You are dull and you are slow spiritually, and you are not able to get what he calls in the Amplified uh, spiritual insight. He says you are sluggish and slothful, the Amplified says. So discernment has actually to do with being quick in the spirit. If you are quick in the spirit, we're going to look at that in the future. You have a quickness to discern quickly what's going on and to see by the Holy Spirit, this is from God and this is not. But because our spirits are slow, we are sluggish, um, it's like we are tired and we are not sensitive, we can't really discern what's going on. Now, this passage of scripture we're going to read now, Paul's going to tell us how to become stronger in discernment. Verse 12, For even though by this time you ought to be teaching others, you actually need someone to teach you all over again, the very principles of God's word. You need to come uh, to drink milk and not solid food. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. So he says something amazing. He says, you guys, you are supposed to be now eating solid food. You're supposed to be mature and be able to eat meat now. But now you are only drinking milk still. You are spiritually still uh, immature and childish, and uh, you are inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. He says, you still need the first principles of the Word of God. You can't even go on to maturity. So I've got a teaching where we speak about um, we spoke for, for many weeks on the basics of hearing the voice of God. And then I came to the second level, which I call the intermediate level of growing spiritually. And then later we came to the advanced level. And so here Paul is talking about going on to maturity. And so we, he's calling us unto maturity. And he says, in order to go to maturity, we need to understand what he calls the doctrine of righteousness. Now, if you continue one verse further, he says, yeah, but solid food is for the full grown men, for those whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good, noble, what is evil, what is contrary either to human law or divine law. So he says, only once you're mature, only once you are spiritually uh, grown up and your senses are trained, you will be able to discern. Now, I praise God for many years. 
uh, God has given me a gift. I remember the first time the gift began to activate. I began to know things about people. I began to experience things about people. I know things in people's bodies now. Uh, I've now become very sensitive. I would, if I just begin to pray for people, uh, even if I sometimes touch people, then I would know what problems are in their bodies, what organs have problems. Uh, I can tell you what spirits are operating. I can really reveal things. God even gives me wisdom in why they are operating there, how to get them out, why they came in, and how to get them out. Hallelujah. And so God has really grown me in that gift. But it is something that is supernatural where our spiritual senses and our, se our spiritual faculties, the Bible says here, are trained by practice. So that's a training process. And we need to train and exercise the gift. Now, how do you do that? How do you become more sensitive? How do you become more sharper in the spirit to discern? And the answer lies in the doctrine of righteousness. Now, I want to explain something amazing to you that God showed me how it works. So there's a place. Let's look at this round, this round table. And there's a place on the inside of this round table where the doctrine of righteousness operate. And when you're outside of this place, you can't discern. Inside here, anything that is in here that's not supposed to be in here, you will immediately begin to pick up. You'll begin to sense it. So there must be a purification of this place first, so that if anything comes in here, I can discern. But what is in there that's not supposed to be there? So myself, I've become like a flow or a river that God's Spirit can flow through, that I can stand in a place of purity, in a place of the righteousness of Christ, so that when something comes into this place, it will disturb the presence of God immediately. So if, often when I pray for people, I will feel like, yo, there's just no breakthrough. I can't get through in the Spirit. I feel this frustration, and it's not mine. It's theirs. It's what they feel like. Sometimes when I intercede and I pray, then God allow me to feel what people are feeling because they feel cut off from Him. They feel far from Him. The uh, Holy Spirit just shows me now a Jezebel spirit has made them feel like they are not worthy. And so they are fighting a battle and they can't break through to God because they have got no discernment of what spirit is operating and cutting them off from God. Hallelujah. And so we need to become more sensitive and he says you, you you are dull so dull means you're kind of slow you're kind of sluggish you're, you're not quick to perceive things and pick up things in the spirit so you don't know what's really going on and that's the strongest part of what god has created us to have is the spirit of god in the inside of us can discern things but because we've not been purified we've not been cleansed out we hear through perversion. We, we hear through other stuff that is still there and we kind of hear through this warped mirror. And God wants to clean us out. Now look at this, what he says here. You are inexperienced and you're unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. So there's a skill. There's an experience that you need to build up. And it's literally like an eye. When you look through the eye of something, then you are going to go through, like it's like a telescope of a, of a gun. You are looking to get the, um, the, the buck into the hairline so that you can shoot it accurately where you want to shoot it. And so sometimes we have got no focus and we do not know how to get the enemy directly in the hairline so that I can take him out. And so we're all over the place. Our emotions are all over the place. And we are not calm and we are not in the righteousness of God. We're in guilt. We're in feelings of unworthiness. We're in feelings of uh, all kinds of fears and all kinds of uh, insecurities on the inside of us. And all those spirits are stopping us from able to have a pure flow and discern what spirit is truly operating. 
And we need to be able to become experienced in that. So he says, but those who have their senses practice. Now, I want to begin to encourage you today. I want you to learn to and to have a new mind of saying, you know, I'm going to begin to see if I can sense things. If I walk into a room, what do I sense? If somebody speaks to me, what do I sense? And listen with what you are sensing. Now, when I say sense, you see, this is not necessarily only what I'm hearing with my ears. My wife's parents are both deaf. And because they are deaf, they cannot hear with their ears. But she says they always know when they've stolen uh, nachis or when they've smoked when they were younger. Why? How do they know that? Because their other senses are acutely developed because they couldn't hear. So they needed to rely on the other senses. And sometimes we as human beings and even as Christians, we have not learned to rely on our spiritual senses. We are relying on our physical senses. So we are lazy. We are, we are out of tune. And we need to learn to begin to exercise what we are sensing in the Spirit. Hallelujah. So I want to pray for you right now that God will bring you into His righteousness. So His righteousness is what He has paid for. And when I walk in His righteousness, I have a peace. And I allow that peace because of the mercies of God and with a renewed mind, I am now ready to be able to discern. Hallelujah. You might think, but well, that's a lot of things, but it's training and it's practice. You can't just drive a car when you get into it. You need to learn to use all the pedals and learn to, to steer the steering wheel and to change the gears. And after a while, that becomes second nature. It's, it's not difficult to do all those things anymore. But in the beginning, it feels like I'm looking down and I'm trying to see where I'm supposed to drive and I'm driving into things because I'm not trained in driving a car. So I want to train you in driving in the Spirit. Hallelujah. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. And thank you for the righteousness of Christ. Thank you, Father, that we can receive that place. And I pray right now that people will begin to enter into the place of your righteousness, Lord. That they will receive the righteousness of Christ that you've made available for them for free. You paid a price. Yes, it was an expensive price, but we can get it for free. We don't have to deserve it. And so, Father, thank you, Lord, that we can walk into that place. Whoa, thank you, Father. And as we walk into that place, Lord, by faith, mm -hmm. thank you, Lord, that by faith we can enter that place and we can begin to receive the position of righteousness we were given in Christ. And Father, thank you that we've been given access into this state of your favor through righteousness, Lord. And we can now have peace with you, Lord. Thank you, Father. And so, Father, thank you, Lord, that in that place of peace, our whole spirit body, our spiritual senses can become more acutely aware of what is happening around us in Jesus' name. I pray, Father, for your Holy Spirit to help people to become sensitive in their spirits, even in their bodies, Father, even in their souls, to be aware of of their environment spiritually in Jesus' name. Yes, wow. Just receive. God is just imparting a revelation. I just see revelation coming in. That's what we're going to speak about in the next few programs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. And He's just bringing in truth. He's bringing in His anointing. He's bringing in the truth that you can walk in His righteousness. So the when you walk in His righteousness, we've looked at those teachings, go back to those teachings where you're in a place of a poise and a place of His righteousness, and that will bring you into a stronger place of discernment. Thank you, Father. Mm. I just feel healing flowing there. Thank you, Lord, for healing that's flowing there right now. For people, there's, there's a lot of things available in that place 
when we are able from that place to discern, we are able to operate from that place, which is called the place of Christ. It is being in Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, Jesus. Just receive your righteousness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. He says to me, I'm strengthening you in your inner man, inner man, so that you will have a umpire that is set up in your heart so that you could discern and stay in the pendulum of my righteousness. Thank you, Father. So the pendulum will always try to swing out, but it will always stand still in a perfect straight place. And so that's righteousness. So if you're in the pendulum of righteousness, then anything else that is off will be discerned. Thank you, Father. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Help us to also, he shows me an eagle that swerves up into the sky like a, like a spiral. And so we will spiral up and up and up into the spirit, into the truth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you that we can stand in your righteousness and we can receive it instantly and unconditionally in your love, Father. He says to me, I'm washing out perversion. I'm washing out all perverseness of people hearing through an, a non-cleansed um, vision, a non-cleansed eye. Because we are looking through so such a broad eye. We are not looking through the, the eye of a needle. And as you look through his righteousness, it must be like one who looks through the eye of a needle. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, as I'm in the spirit, I'm, I'm actually helping you. and I'm hearing things that will lead you into more truth. And that's just the way I operate. That's the way God helps me to grow in the spirit. And I hope it's also helping you. Thank you for having listened to the Doctrine of Righteousness. Come and follow us on Patmos Studio um, and share with your friends, share with them to grow in discernment. Uh, the four basics are really uh, amazing in helping us to grow in a deeper place of discernment. Hallelujah. Amen.